Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a story of a man who found out his wife has been cheating on him with a male friend. And this is what he finally did. Here's the full story with an update. Me, 26 male, and my wife, 25 female, have been married just over a month. My friend, 25 male, worked with me for three years and was one of my best friends. So we were laying in bed and she received a message from one of my friends and immediately swiped up. I asked her what it was and to see it. She told she wants to protect his privacy. I reminded her that she's my wife and we should never hide anything, especially messages from other dudes. She freaked out saying you don't trust me, I can't believe this, I'm sleeping on the couch and she deleted everything off her phone between him and her and blocks him on everything. Next day rolls around and she's mad at me, and I'm still mad at her. I man up and tell her she's lost some of my trust but if she's being honest that it really was nothing I would forgive her if I can see the message. She deleted them all and blocked him. My gut was screaming at me but I put it aside and the rest of the day goes on well, and without incident. The next day I get woken up from a call from my coworker, different coworker, that my friend slaughtered himself the night before. I was dumbfounded and shocked. I saw him two days before and we were talking about his half day. He was talking to go fishing. I could tell that my wife was taking it hard too and I thought it was odd cause she's only met him three to four times and didn't talk much about it with her. A few days later, the day after we celebrated our one month I get a call from the wife saying hey, please don't go over to girl's house, I need to talk to you first. I'm confused and say I don't know what she's talking about. Then the girlfriend of my friend saying she needs to talk to me and unloads information that my wife and friend have been talking for months. I go over and she shows me the messages, there were I can't wait for our future together, I can't wait to meet our children, I love you and bears and all that talking about how magical the other day was. I was scrolling through the messages for about 30 minutes and didn't even get to the end of the week. But the last text he sent was to my wife saying I love you this isn't your fault. I went home and she was gone. I went on a two-day bender with no contact with her. Besides the occasional drunk you broke me texts from me. And no contact with anyone else. I call my family, tell them what happened. They are worried about me, understandable. And they just keep asking if I have my weapons in the house and all that. I reassure them I'm not a danger to myself and just need a few days to decompress. They put me in contact with their lawyer. After close to six hours of talking to him, I decided to file for a divorce. Last night I get a message from her that says I want to work through this and we should both go to individual and couples counseling. I haven't messaged her back. I'm terrified that she will try to take me over the coals, but I hope that she is civil about everything and says my stuff is mine, your stuff is yours I hope to God that she isn't pregnant too. So I'm sitting at home with my two dogs waiting for a call from my lawyer saying that she has been served. Thank you to everyone for your support. This has been a hard few weeks, but I have gotten through it mostly sober and well enough with the help of my friends and family. Here's the update, I'm trying to fill in details of the last week or two, so I have been mostly sober the last few weeks, only going out occasionally, and to be out with friends, no sad home alone or sitting at the bar alone drinking. I did not attend the funeral or memorial service for the recently departed. I've been trying to keep my contact with my wife to as little as possible, answering questions about health insurance, and other similar things. Shortly after my first post I hired a lawyer and had him start writing up the paperwork for a divorce. Three to four days after she left, I was told by my friend that my wife texted her and said she was in the hospital for a self-slaughtering attempt. An hour later I got a text from my wife saying she was released because she promised not to hurt herself to the staff. I think she was lying. That's not how hospitals in that area deal with life-ending attempts. A day later after that, I got the Apple Watch from the departed man's girlfriend, which has messages dating back to about the day that we got back from our honeymoon, early October. I gave the watch to the lawyer and he has all of the messages and pictures now for the case, as for anything before that date. They both deleted messages so I can't see them till we get the phone back from the police. There has really been no other communication besides setting up a time when she can come and get more of her clothes. Me and the departed man's girlfriend have talked occasionally, and I've thanked her for telling me even though I know it must have been extra heartbreaking for her. I'm going to be gifting her a lot of stuff, or just probably anonymous cash in the mailbox to help her and her daughter out. The divorce was filed, and she should be getting served soon, by the end of today or by next week. I still do not think she knows about my plans of divorce and I'm fine with that. The lawyer said that our state is a no-fault state, so technically she would have the ability to try and claim half of my things, 
But since the marriage was so short the judge will just separate us with our things from before the marriage. I'm not looking to go after anything of hers. I don't want her car. I don't want her money. Not that she has any. I just want to keep my house, car, dogs and retirement. And I just hope to God that she is not pregnant. So that's about all that has happened in the last few weeks. I'll answer comments and messages to the best of my ability and give an update rather soon. Thank you all. So after a while more and more people from work started telling me that they knew about the affair, but didn't want to tell me cause it wasn't my place or I didn't want to make things awkward. Apparently the guy was not quiet about it, and was sending her bears around work. So I've had guys come up showing me my wife saying hey dude isn't this your wife? I also learned that she sent him money a couple times, part of money that I sent her to pay for the wedding, and that they have been continually calling each other daily three to six times a day for months, and at some point they had gotten a hotel room together sometime in August or September. She has continually lied until I bring up another fact, and another fact. So I just stopped contact. She may be coming over tomorrow or this weekend to get some of her things. I have a friend coming over to basically supervise, so she can't say I did anything. I have most of her stuff packed up. She got served this weekend and I couldn't be happier, although everything is honestly seems bland and bleak. I spent the last six years of my life dedicated to her, we were planning our future, and she threw it all away. And she really thought that there would be some semblance of forgiveness and a relationship and that we could heal together after this, before she got served. I have my family and certain friends to thank for their constant love and support. I wanted to thank each and every one of you for your advice and support through this time in my life. OP, release the memories of the past version of her and eliminate all remnants of her influence. She relegated you to a secondary role without any regard for your feelings. Being someone's backup plan doesn't lead to any victorious outcome. She's not just damaged, she's malevolent. She poses a threat to your mental and emotional health. Your spouse is dealing with deeply troubling issues. I deeply empathize with the difficult experiences you've endured. Surround yourself with a supportive circle of friends and family. Consider seeking individual counseling to navigate these challenges. With professional guidance, you can acquire the tools needed to protect yourself from individuals who are unkind and deceitful, like your spouse. Good luck and stay strong. My 54 male and wife 55 female have been married 31 years. We live on West Coast. 20 years ago my company moved our little family, three kids too from the East Coast. Over the years I have taken on more responsibility and am currently a VP of West Coast Operations. I latched onto the coattails of a man who became my mentor. When he was promoted to North America VP, I took his spot. He is now retiring. He has encouraged me to put my hat in the ring to replace him. If I get the position it would mean moving back to the East Coast where we grew up. We are well established where we are. We are involved in the community through the charitable works of my company's foundation and our own personal charities we work with. Our kids are grown now and scattered across the country, none live near us. Our weekends are usually full of events or traveling to see the kids' families. I discussed this with the wife. She has some issues with me getting the position. She is not sure she wants to uproot everything. The move would take us back to near our extended families. One of our kids would be about 200 miles away. This probably my last move up in the company because at my age and position now there is nowhere else to go. We have discussed this and came to the conclusion to do the interviews as it won't hurt anything. My boss, friend is pushing for me. I know many of the board members as some come to the charity events we participate in. I also know the upper management quite well because of the years I have been here. I have to emphasize here again my wife is having a hard time with this. I understand completely how she feels. So I went to the interviews this week. Flew back east to HQ. Interviews went well. Three other internal candidates and they are looking outside the company also. I had to sell myself to them. They did not try to sell the position to me. So I know that I am not a sure thing here. Talked to the wife each night. She started crying that she did not want to keep me from this promotion. We would talk when I got back. I know she was emotional because of the move but this was out of the norm for her. The last interview was Thursday. I was staying and flying back on Friday. I caught a flight back on Thursday to see what was up. I walked in the door about 9pm and she is on the couch with a guy Sam I know from some charity work. There is an empty wine bottle. I asked what was going on. She said Sam stopped over to talk about an upcoming event. Having a drink with a guest is not unusual when I am there. I take my bag to the bedroom, the bed is unmade. We always make the bed every morning. It's a habit of accomplishing something every day, never miss. I walk back out and Sam is leaving. 
We say goodbye, then wife kisses me and asks why I am at home a day early. I walk past her into the kitchen, dishes on the table, pots on the stove. She made dinner. I asked what is going on here. Oh I was cooking so asked Sam to stay for dinner. My wife will seldom if ever cook a full meal when I am gone. She asks again why are you home so early. She is really nervous and is visibly shaking. I told her I knew she was upset with the potential move and wanted to talk with her. I then told her I think you need to tell me what the hell is going on. She starts crying hysterically and blubbering something I could not understand. Now she is a bit tipsy from the wine but I can see she is sobering up quick. She says nothing is going on why do you say that? I am usually pretty calm, but I lost it. It looks like you are screwing Sam. Do I have that right? She said to stop yelling and went to the bedroom and locked the door. So now it's Saturday she only came out to grab something to eat while I was on the phone and ran back to the room. I have asked her to come out and talk. I promise not to yell. I know she is deflecting, trying to come up with a reasonable, explainable excuse. What else can I do? I need some clothes for sure. Took what I have on out of the laundry. I am praying there is a reasonable answer but with her being locked up I don't think so. My boss called me and said another round of interviews next week. I don't know whether to stay for the marriage or to continue the interviews. I already bailed on a dinner tonight since she won't answer me through the door. I really have no one to bounce this off. My eldest son and I are best buds but I can't take this to him. Help me think straight. I just want to update what has transpired since the post yesterday. Shortly after I posted Saturday, I finally was able to get her to come out of our bedroom. She had me assure her that I would not yell. I said I just want to talk. So I went over everything I saw. The unmade bed, the dinner the wine, Sam leaving right away. She asked what was wrong with any of it. She did not make the bed that day. She was trying out a new recipe. Had wine with dinner and finished it after. Probably drank too much. Sam is a long-time bachelor. Wife passed away seven years ago. He stays busy with some of the charities we work with. I just shook my head. I know what I was seeing but she has an explanation for all. I asked why she would not open the door. She started with she was afraid of me. She knows that I have never laid a hand on anyone since the 8th grade. It is not me. I would rather talk things out or separate until everyone cools down. The other reason was she was not ready to tell me something else. We have known of the position opening since April. My boss presented to the board his plan to retire end of the year. They want the position filled by fourth quarter. There would be a time when the incoming VP would work alongside my boss. My boss has vacation time accumulated so that he won't be working much in December. He gave us the heads up shortly after notifying the board. The wife and I talked about it since then. She has expressed that she did not want to start life over again. She has a nice career. Her company does not have a branch back east. She would have to job hunt. I told her she could just not work but feels that she would be unfulfilled. She really thinks I will get the promotion because of my boss. I told her over and over that it is not final until the board votes on a candidate. So she has decided that she would rather divorce than move. She just wasn't ready for me to come home early. She had not in her mind how to tell me. She knew it would crush me. We have a very solid marriage up to now. We do not put on a show for others since we are in the public so much. Sex is still good. Has diminished in frequency as we have aged. We both initiate. We are very much each other's best friend. She was right. I am crushed. I asked what was her plan if I don't get the job. Her answer was that everything stays the same then. I asked her if she was crazy. Did she think I would forget? Forgive. I called my lawyer. We are friends also. Me calling on the weekend is not an infringement into his personal time. After pleasantries he listened to me until I mentioned potential divorce. He stopped me there. He said I cannot represent you. The wife has already hired him. I asked if he knew someone else. He said he will send me a list of names from other firms. He told me he personally will not handle the divorce. He will hand it over to another associate in the firm. I still have an uneasy feeling on what I saw. So I took a couple of commentors suggestion. I called Sam. I explained to him very calmly that the wife and I talked. Now I want to hear from him. He gave me the same story word for word, like it was rehearsed. Then I got hold of the wife's phone. It was scrubbed clean. Only messages from Saturday night and today. I guess I am getting divorced anyways why should it matter but it does. A few years ago I was off work for a couple months due to some medical issues. I had the company install an office in my home. I took one of the kids old rooms and made a home office. I had a couple of the IT guys come over and get me set up. At the time it was better than my office at work. So I called one of the guys to ask if you can retrieve erased messages and call logs that were deleted from a Samsung S10. He said that it was easy, Google it. I asked him if he could walk me through it. So after a bit we had most of records restored. 
I searched the phone and found lots of calls to one number I don't know who a few months ago. I found Sam's number lots of calls recently. I checked the texts nothing overly sensual but certainly not charity related. Lots of meet up plans. As I am finishing the wife knocks on the door as I locked myself in. She asked if I seen her phone. I opened the door and said yeah I have it I fixed it. She asked what I meant. I told her that I saw her call logs and messages were deleted so I restored them. Her mouth dropped open, she stuttered. Then came the obligatory you went through my phone. She snatched the phone and stormed away. I called after her we need to talk some more. She went out the door and have not seen or heard from her all day. So Monday I need to call the lawyer. I have already been through bank records. No money has been moved around. I printed balances as of today. I now need to call my kids. I see that she had called each Saturday. I think the well has been poisoned. It is starting to set in. She is my life, my partner. Now she will be gone. I feel like when my parents died. How can I go to such a position without her by my side? Edit. Through this is all she is maintaining there is no cheating. She keeps saying that it may look like it but she would never do that to me. OP. I'm truly sorry to see you going through this difficult situation. It's evident that your spouse had made a decisive choice quite some time ago. She had even sought legal counsel before informing you. And it seems like she might be using her new job as a means to exit the relationship. It appears she had been unfaithful prior to the job opportunity and is now seizing the opportunity to end the relationship while placing the blame on you. It's a heartless situation. Your wife isolating herself in the bedroom serves not only to coordinate her narrative with Sam, but also to conceal any evidence of prior events that transpired in there. There's a clear motive behind her hastiness in retreating to that room. You're taking appropriate steps in response to this situation. However, considering your continued physical intimacy with your spouse, it's crucial to get tested for STIs, as this might not be the first instance of infidelity. Good luck and stay strong with your kids and with the job. English isn't my first language, please bear with me. This is the story of my friend more he's like my rival, but I always admired him. He's one step ahead of me everything, but we were each other's bros. For his privacy let's call him William and his wife Jane. The names aren't real, so fast forward. William married Jane when he was 23 and she 25, and they have a boy together. They met in a trekking and things went smooth. Jane was a smooth talker and a good woman. My wife is suffering from breast cancer and she was there for her. Like Jane was like an older sister to my wife. William never complained about her, but over a year ago, he mentioned Jane is super protective about her phone and acting cold. He said to me they didn't had sex for over six months, and each time when he tries to initiate intimacy she refuses. Even in their wedding anniversary she came home at 4am. I knew there was a bunch of red flags and I told him that probably she might have been seeing someone. He said he has been suspecting it for a long time, but he didn't want to believe that possibility, so it kept going on. Like she became a rare visitor to my wife. I told my wife his problem, so she agreed to identify it in a sneaky way. After the sneaky talk with my wife, my wife told me she's seeing a guy but they are platonic and he's a great mechanic. I knew where this was going and my wife knew it too. I told William about the situation but he said Jane wouldn't do that I'm sure. She's my girl she wouldn't do such an act. I told him to hire a PI and we can at least be okay. So he hired a PI but he couldn't find any suspicious activities. After three months he came up with a photo that's all he got. The photo was she was holding hands of a guy walking out a theater. So he called me telling he needed to talk. He looked like a total mess, like a guy who lost everything. He smiled at me and said what have I done wrong. I knew he's in a self-slaughtering condition. So me and him went to a bar and drank to bottom. And he opened up like she was not I thought of. She never do household chores for over three months and she only cares about our boy. All she gives me is a forehead kiss before and after bed. She tells she's either tired or wants some space. What do I do? I knew he was broke. Over days I told him he's not alone and build a strong mind in him. Our friends circle and lot other guys supported him. Over time he realized that she ain't worth. So he went outside marriage and hooked up with a woman at his work. We are in same company but in different departments. Both of them were digital artists. So we'll met Helena. She was much younger than him. He introduced her to me and said I'm gonna enjoy my life. She was like a model, like video game spy characters. They had several hookups and like they are couples. He was happy and never cared about Jane. Things got to start a turn when Jane noticed him been happy and felt like he's been distant. So she confronted me and asked whether Will was seeing someone and how's he doing. But I lied. So on Christmas she confessed to her husband that she was having an affair for over a year. 
that she realizes how precious their marriage is and how amazing Will is. Will hid his tears and asked her about the details. She said it was a mistake and it's over and we can be together again. He said it's over between them and he needs a divorce and asked her to leave. So she went to her mom's house and kept calling and texting all day. During this time Will had made a separate account and moved his funds in there and opened new accounts in several new banks. Will withdrew from joint account and kept half of the money for her. She cried and begged not to divorce her. By that time Will had moved on, and Jane did a self-slaughtering attempt, and told Will that she'll do anything, and she couldn't live without him, and she'll do anything. Will didn't even bother to visit her at hospital. After the discharge she came to his home and told all this. He said he needed some clarification and asks her to start talking. If she lies no second chance and nothing. So she told him that he was a local mechanic. And she felt lonely and she missed her youth and wanted to feel it again. So first it start by her car breaking down and meeting him. Exchanged their numbers. Over a month it turned sensual. The relationship was an hot steamy affair. He wanted to know where she was at their son's birthday and their anniversary. She told she was with him. And she was having sex when he called her for their son's birthday. That she told him she was late busy at work. And an anniversary she went for a ride with AP and had several love making that day. She even brought him an apartment. Will was crushed hearing that and called her all sort of names. She says she's sorry and think about our son and we can be his papa and mama again. He said it was a mistake meeting her and he's fed up of her. And she is a dead meat to him. She holds his legs and begs not to leave her. That she'll do anything and AP didn't mean anything. AP is a 27-year-old guy who cheated on Jane and dumbed her week before Xmas. She was emotionally attached to AP and me and Will knew it. After several pleading and counseling Will took her back. Not because he loved her it's because he didn't had a choice. In our country adultery is a fault in divorce. But in order to do so you need hard evidence. If you can't prove it then you're effed. You need hard proof to win against her in court. And Will didn't had any hard evidence. He was busy with Helena all time. But he had other plans in mind. He laid rules. She had no choice to accept it. Cleaning household is her duty and laundry. She has to obey anything he says or else she's out. Always ready for sex whenever he wants and should do any acts he says. All her email, phone, account details and passwords should be known to him. He became cold towards her. After sex he kicks her out of the room and says this is his bed you can sleep in guest bed. And often he comes late at home. He calls her by first name and shouts and curses her for silly mistakes. She soon found about Helena and confronted him and he told door is open you can leave if you like. Jane often visits my wife and asks for advice what to do to save her marriage. She gives tips and advice. My wife was really sad about her. Jane told my wife that she often gets rejected and will never lets her sleep in the same bed. And one day she dresses up and went to him but he made fun of her and told her to grow up. She's a mess now. I even feel pity for her. Will often says to his girlfriend that his wife is an old cow and she ain't good as she is. Things gets cruel when she learns Will is going on a business trip with Helena. It shattered her and Will told her he's not her. And they are just friends now. But I knew what were they. And in the company party we were supposed to bring our spouses to it. Jane was looking forward to this. But Will turned her down and said we need to work things out and he went single. And was with Helena all along. Helena was understanding and they are like a couple. They do everything a couples do. Will told Helena that he would leave Jane when his son is 18. And he told me that too. He treats her like crap. He doesn't do physical abuse. But does mentally. Like if she doesn't clean the table he would say Mr. Mechanic would do that. And if anything she doesn't do in bedroom he mentions her infidelity. And guilts her saying it's all her fault. I don't know where this gonna end. I think he stayed because of his son. He doesn't care about money. But he's rutherless to Jane now. Things have been going like this. Jane comes to my wife for solace. This is long because of the incidents that happened over two years. I'm hoping both of them finds peace. OP, it appears that this relationship has reached its conclusion, and I'm uncertain why Jane would attempt to maintain a connection with someone who clearly has no interest in reconciling after her actions. Even if this individual is currently treating her poorly, it's a consequence of her decision to salvage a marriage that she was responsible for breaking. It seems as though she may be subjecting herself to self-imposed punishment, hoping that this person might eventually extend sympathy towards her. However, it's evident that he views her as someone who is emotionally scarred and no longer considers her deserving of his company. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like my videos then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.